Good day everyone. Once again we're back together. Welcome to our YouTube channel and uh, today we'll be looking at functions once again. Um, uh, in fact I'm looking at the cubic function you know I, I just thought uh, you know let me just include it uh, as part of our syllabus you know uh, even though we haven't done calculus uh, but I am going to include it. Uh, so yeah, um, if you're new to the to this channel, okay, welcome, and please subscribe. Just hit that subscribe button, and please don't forget to also hit the notification bell, so that you are notified every time that we are posting a new lesson. All right, and um, so I want us to get quickly into the lesson. But uh, just a reminder for those of you who need assistance, either in mathematics or physical science, you're more than welcome to also get in touch with us. And our email address is info at mlungisingosi.co.za. Hopefully, I'm still going to be your favorite plug when it comes to maths and science, okay? Right, now let's get into the lesson. Um, now, we want to talk about the cubic function. Okay, so in this case, when we talk about the cubic function, um, we are going to just look at a couple of things. So obviously, this is where the highest, uh, um, you know, um, yeah, power of x is 3. So in this case, the standard form of a cubic um, function is, you know, f of x, let's say for argument's sake, is equal to ax cubed plus bx squared plus cx plus d. Now, um, in the standard form, uh, there are quite a number of advantages. Well, there's one advantage, really, uh, but we're going to talk about how to go about solving in this case. So this is the th standard format of it. Right. Now, um, please just remember, just like any other graph, we're going to look at certain things about it. Um, and, yeah, just look at uh, how to go about, the, uh, you know, finding the x-intercept, the y-intercept, and so on. The first thing that I want you to note for the cubic function is that when the value of a is greater than zero, okay, now it determines the shape of your graph. So in this case, it would be a shape. It's an increasing, it starts as an increasing function. Can you see that it's increasing there? So it starts as an increasing function. And if the value of a is less than zero, then it starts as a decreasing function. So uh, in fact, uh, what you start with is that you're going to have a local maximum. Can you see that uh, at that turning point, you've got a maximum. So you start with a local maximum and then a minimum. Whereas uh, A less than zero, you're going to have a minimum first and a maximum after. And then, um, yeah, so that's very important. So the value of A uh, either being positive or negative determines the shape of the graph, okay? And then um, what you also would, uh, you know, what is of note uh, in this case is that if you want to uh, ever find, let's say for argument's sake, uh, the x-intercept, okay? So if we wanted to get the x-intercept, once again, nothing changes about the cubic function, okay? Um, we know that y is equal to zero. I'm just, you know, uh, re-emphasizing that. Nothing changes about it. Okay, and uh, this is where y is equal to zero. And what you're going to do is factorize. I'm going to teach you some really, really nice ways uh, of doing that today. Right, so uh, y-intercept, we know that this is where x is equal to zero. But the fortunate thing is that if you look at the equation, if you are given the equation in standard form like that, then d, which is your constant term, the one without an x in it, uh, uh, automatically becomes your x in uh, your, sorry your y intercept. Okay, so if you don't have the value of d, so that means that it will cut at zero, um, and so on and so forth. Right. Now we've got something else that we know. Um, we also need to find the turning points. Okay. So those values there, we call them the maximum and the minimum. Okay, how do we determine that? So in order to get the turning point of your graph, so remember, for the turning point, I am simply going to do the following. 
I am going to take, okay, I am going to take the derivative of x and make it equal to zero. Now, of course, um, for those of you who've uh, already done metric who are upgrading, you'd probably know this better. Uh, but for some of you who have not done calculus as yet, uh, please don't worry too much about it. Uh, you will learn later, but nonetheless, I will teach it. Okay. So you take the derivative and make it equal to zero. Of course, you will get two values there um, in most cases. And in that case, what you do is to find the y value, uh, you will substitute back into the main equation. Okay, so uh, so y will be equals to f of x. So you'll substitute back into the original equation. So I, I don't want to talk a lot about it uh, because I would like for us to illustrate as much as possible. Okay, and then um, uh, another thing is uh, what we call the point of inflection. Now, let me just explain quickly. Uh, so the point of inflection. Uh, of the graph inflection okay now what is this point of inflection so when you look at the graph it's actually um, divided into two portions okay let me take this picture for instance okay uh, at that blue dot so the graph is actually segmented into two parts uh, the first part is where you've got a concave down shape can you see the one that i'm shading in the yellow okay so it starts by being concave down but then you have another portion which i'm going to make a uh, red uh, drawing red so the other portion now becomes concave up can you see that portion eh? so what this simply means is that um, at the point of inflection this is the point that separates between the two parts where the shape of the graph is concave down and the con and, and concave up, okay? Now, how do we get this point of inflection? We say, well, we take the double derivative, okay? So f double dash x is equal to zero, and that is how we will get our point of inflection. Uh, and of course, if you want to get, so this will give you the x value, and if you want to get the y value, you will obviously substitute back into the original equation. Okay, right. Now, I want to just take an example, all right, and talk about, you know, the cubic function. Perhaps if there's something that I left out, I will be able to emphasize it as we do the example. Okay, let's go into it. All right, now let's have a look at it quickly. So they say draw the graph of uh, f of x is equal to x cubed plus 4x squared minus 11x minus 30. So we're going to take this step by step. Okay, so what's the first thing that we're going to do? I'd say to you, find the y-intercept. Okay, that's the easiest to find. So let's find the y-intercept first. So what happens at the y-intercept? We know this is where x is equal to 0. So I'm not going to waste much, much time here. So it means we're going to take f of 0. This is going to be um, x cubed. Uh, everywhere we see x, we are going to substitute 0. Uh, squared minus 11 times 0 minus 30. Now, of course, everything multiplied by 0 gives you 0. So you end up with f of 0 giving you minus 30. As I did indicate to you, that the d value, yeah, so which means that your a here is equal to 1, your b is equal to 4, your c is negative 11, and your d is negative 30. Uh, sorry that I uh, just wrote them uh, all clustered up like that. Okay, right. So in this case, it means that your y-intercept, okay, uh, will be at where x is 0 and y is negative 30. All right, now the second thing that we're going to do is we are going to find our x-intercept, okay? So x-intercept, we know that at the x-intercept, what happens? 
y is equal to 0. So it means that you're going to take the entire equation and make it equal to 0. So you know that in this case, f of x, which is x cubed, um, plus 4x squared minus 11x minus 30 is equal to 0. Now, this is a bit of a cumbersome exercise, but um, I'll explain to you why. Because now, uh, as opposed to a quadratic function where you are just you can just factorize just like that, here what you need to do is find the factor first. So we need to find uh, the factors. Um, and what is a factor? It, obviously, uh, a factor, it's a number that when you substitute into the equation, uh, gives you a result of zero. So how do you know which number it's going to be? All you're going to do is just... Uh, you know, just keep repeating the same process. So what you do is you're going to substitute, okay, you can start with zero and then substitute one and then substitute minus one and substitute uh, two and substitute minus two, you know, and so on and so forth. Three minus three until you find a number that when you substitute gives you zero. So let's start with the first one. Of course, zero, uh, it's obvious we've substituted zero before. It doesn't give us a, a, a result of zero, okay? So let's find, let's say f of one, okay? So it means everywhere we see x, we're going to find, we're substituting one. So one cubed plus four times one squared minus 11 times one minus 30, okay? And this would be equal to zero. Okay, uh, sorry, not equal to zero, rather. Uh, we want to know what that number will give us. Okay, let's try and get rid of that. Okay, let's find out what it will give us. All right, so all you do is just pull out your calculator and just see there. So I'm going to have uh, 1 plus 4 uh, minus 11 uh, minus uh, 30. And in this case, I get negative 36. So what that tells me, because that does not give me zero, it means that that is not a factor. So let's try minus one. Okay. You see how tedious this can be. Okay. Um, so in this case, we're going to say minus one cubed plus four times minus one squared minus 11 times minus one minus 30 okay let's see again so we've got uh minus one okay plus four uh, plus 11 minus 30. okay i get minus 16 so again it means that minus one is not a factor and then let's say f of uh two Okay, so can you see, I've tried, this one doesn't work, this one doesn't work, doesn't work, and now we are trying uh, two. So we're going to say that's two cubed plus four times two squared minus 11 times two minus 30. Okay, so let's do that. So that's two cubed uh, plus... Uh, 4 times 2 squared, um, uh, 2, uh, 30, okay, um, I get a number, okay, I get minus 28, so that means it doesn't work, okay, I'm sure you're getting frustrated with this, right, uh, you can just speed it up here and just until we find what works, so minus 2, uh, let's see, minus 2 cubed plus 4 times minus 2 squared minus 11 times minus 2 uh, minus 30. And let's see, okay. Okay. Uh, all right, I get a 0. Yay, finally. <laughs> All right, so what does that tell us? It tells us that minus 2 
is a factor. Now, please, I want you to listen carefully. The moment you find one of them to be a factor, one of the numbers to be a factor, what that simply means, now, remember, which number did we substitute? We substituted minus 2. So it means that, now please, I want you to listen carefully. x cubed minus uh, 4x squared, uh, sorry, plus rather, minus 11x minus 30 is equal to 0. Okay, so what this simply means is that um, when we take minus 2, as a factor, it means one of the factors. Now, remember, for us to have x is equal to minus 2, it would mean that x plus 2 is equal to 0. You know when you factorize, right? Uh, you say if you've got x uh, minus 2, minus 3x plus 4 is equal to 0, uh, what happens? You'd say x is equal to positive 3 or x is equals to minus 4. So what I'm simply saying is that we are starting from here and we're moving a step back. We had a 2 in this particular case, okay? And now we are just tracking back and we're putting it back into the bracket so it changes sign, okay? Right. So um, what we are simply doing is that we're simply trying to get the factor and we got one of the factors to be x plus 2. Now, please, I want you to follow me and listen carefully. I'm going to try and, and illustrate as much as I possibly can. Okay. So now, um, I know many of you would probably want to uh, do long division to find, you know, just the other, the, the, the you know, the quotient uh, in this case, but I, I'm not going to, I'm not about to, to, to go there. Okay, so what I'm going to do is, now please listen carefully. I'm going to say to myself, I'm just going to try and illustrate that. X multiplied by something should give me that X cubed. What is that something that I must multiply by, uh, by, uh, by X in order to get X cubed? Well, you guessed it. It's X squared. Okay x multiplied by x squared should give me that yellow uh, guy there, okay? Or mustard, okay? Right, so then I move to the last term. Now, I'm going to use a different color, all right, for the, uh, you know, for that last term. So it's negative 30, and I'll say 2 multiplied by what gives me negative 30 okay positive 2 times what will give me negative 30 and i'm sure you guessed it i will say 2 multiplied by a negative 15 right now here's the last portion and i want you to listen carefully so now let's make that uh, read okay so i am going to say if I take these two, listen carefully. If I take 2 multiplied by x squared, what do I get? I get 2x squared. But I want my result to be 4x squared. So what's still missing? Right? What can I add or subtract to 2x squared in order to obtain 4x squared? And the answer is quite simple. It's another 2x squared. Okay? So in this case, let me make that blue. So I'm missing a 2x squared. Now, how am I going to get that 2x squared? It means x multiplied by something should give me that 2x squared. Because when I add this, and I add that, you know, the blue, uh, the two blues, they should give me uh, uh, 4x squared, which is that guy over there, 4x squared, right? So in this case, I'm simply going to say, uh, so 2x squared, in order to form the, uh, the 2x squared that is here, so what do I need? I need a plus 
2x so that when I multiply it, x multiplied by what will give me 2x and that is 2x, okay? So I will have plus 2x over there, right? You can play this again and repeat it, okay? And hopefully um, as time goes, uh, we will perfect this method, uh, but I hope that you are able to follow on and hear what I'm saying. Now, don't worry about anything else. Once you've done that, it means that you've got now the other factor. All we need to do now is just to simply factorize, okay? So it means that, okay, I'm just going to write it again so that you can see it. So that's x squared plus 2x minus 15 is equal to zero. In fact, if I had all the time, I'll just, I would just show you this method so that you can just repeat it over and over again. Right, so one of the factors is x plus two, but now we must factorize this quadratic function. Like, um, I mean, this quadratic expression, right? So um, what am I going to do this time around? So let's open our brackets and say, okay, so I've got my two brackets again. So x squared plus 2x minus 15. So in this case, I've got x and x. So the coefficient of x squared is one. So it's x and x. Now, listen carefully again. What are the factors of 15? Let me take a nice and yellow color, right? What are the factors of 15 such that when I subtract them, they give me the middle term, two. Can you see that? What are the factors of 15 such that when I subtract them, give me two? So in that case, what, am I, what are those factors? Of course, you guessed it, it's going to be five and three. Now, when the sign of my constant term in a quadratic function is negative, okay? Uh, I'm gonna make a video on factorization, just teaching factorization only. Okay, so when the sign of my constant term is negative, it tells me that the signs inside my brackets are not the same. Okay, all right, so we've got positive and negative, but now we need to know which one it is. Okay, so what you simply do is that you are going to look at the middle term. The middle term is positive, so it means that the sign of your bigger number must be positive, or the sign of the bigger product in this case must be positive, okay? So in this case, you've got two products, which is five times X. Of course, that's going to give you five X. You've got another product, which is three times X, that will give you three X. Which one is bigger? Definitely five X. So it must mean that bigger product must take on the sign of the middle term. So in this case, it means that the five must be positive, meaning that the three therefore must be negative. I hope you've been able to follow on, ladies and gents. Uh, I tell you, this is quite a nice way of uh, uh, just remembering what I just said. Right, and now we know we've got all our factors. So now we can, okay, let me just remove that. So it means that for our x-intercepts, uh, do you even remember? That's what we're looking for, right? So our x-intercepts, it means that x is equal to negative 2 x is equal to 5, x is equal to 3. So it means that our x-intercept, uh, um, sorry, that's negative 5, okay? So it means that we're going to have, okay, negative 5 and 0. We're going to have negative 2 and 0, okay? And we're going to also have 3 and 0. Okay, right, and that is, that's our x-intercept. Now let's go to the next part, the, the turning point, right? So now we're looking for the turning point of the graph. How do we get the turning point? We said the turning point, all you simply do is take the derivative. Now for those of you who haven't done calculus as yet, please do not panic, okay? So in this case, we've got uh, f of x, our original equation, which is equals to x cubed uh, plus 4x squared minus 11x minus 30. 
right? And how do we get the turning point? We said we take the derivative and we make it equal to zero. Now, what is the derivative? Um, so when you take the derivative, what you simply do, we usually say you jump down and you subtract one from your exponent, okay? So in this case, what you end up with is 3x squared, okay, plus 4 times 2, that's 8, 8x minus 11, and this is equal to, of course, that's a constant term, so uh, in this case, that's going to be equal to 0. Now, as I said, I'm going to dedicate a lesson just on calculus, uh, so um, I don't have it as yet. Uh, but hopefully for those who are going to watch this in the future, there will be that lesson. And so it would be easy to just go and refer to that and come back to this video. Okay, so uh, in this case, all right, just want to get rid of that. So this is our derivative. And we said it must be equal to zero. And then what we're simply going to do is factorize again, right? So in this case, we're going to look at factors of 3 and factors of 11, factors of 3 and factors of 11, such that when you subtract them, they give you 8. Now, let's take factors of 3. So here we are, you know, it's trial and error. Okay, if it works, it works. If it doesn't, it doesn't. So what are the factors of 3? Let's take 3 and 1. Hope, uh, I mean, thankfully, that's a, um, you know, a prime, a prime number. So uh, we don't have to fish around for other factors. So in this case, uh, the factors of 11, that's 11 and 1. Okay, so let's check. If I cross multiply, then, uh, so you take the factors, you put them uh, on top of each other like that. And let's see when we cross multiply. If I take, now, please note, if I take 3 multiplied by 1, what does that give me? It gives me 3. And if I take 11 multiplied by 1, what does that give me? It gives me 11. So if I take 11 subtract 3, remember we said we get the sign from there, okay, from the 11 there. So if I subtract uh, 3 from 11, definitely I get 8 isn't it? So in this case, it means that. Now, because that works, then it means that would be my first bracket. Listen carefully. That would be my first bracket. And it means that would also be my second bracket. So what I would do is let's find two brackets there. So it means my first bracket is 3x and 11. Remember, because I've got an x squared, you mustn't forget to put the x there, right? And then I also have x and I've got 1 because of that second bracket. I've got 1x and I've got 1, which is that bracket there. Right, now again, uh, it tells me uh, that negative there tells me that the signs are not the same. Okay, so let's check. So we've got two products, 11x, we've got 3x, and we know that the bigger product uh, gives us the sign of the middle term. So in this case, which one is our bigger product, 11x or 3x? Okay, that would definitely be 11x. So it means 11x must be positive. So I'm going to put the plus here. So it means that the other one must be negative. And this is equal to zero. Okay. Right, now let's go on to the next one. Okay, so we find, okay, so we've got 3x, all right, uh, 3x is equal to negative 11. Okay, so hopefully I'm, I've got people who know what they are doing here. And x is equal to 1. Okay, and therefore x is equal to negative 11 over 3. And x or x is equal to 1. So those are my two values of the turning point. Now, how do I find the y values of the turning point? I know this feels kind of long now, hey? Uh, so how do I find the y values of the turning point? All I'm going to do is substitute for each value there. So this is going to be minus 11 over 3. 
okay f of minus 11 over 3 so you're going to say minus 11 over 3 cubed so we substitute into the original equation uh, minus 11 over 3 cubed plus uh, 4 times negative 11 over 3 squared minus 11 times negative 11 over 3 um, minus 30 okay so we substitute into the original equation okay we'll put that in the calculator uh, f of 1 uh, fortunately we had already calculated that you remember when we were substituting um, at the top there there it is we've got minus 36 okay so I'm just going to take that there so that's minus 36 now let's work out this one here um, so that gives me okay um, let's see minus 11 over 36 okay okay so I get an answer of uh, for this one I get an answer of 14 point uh, yeah 14.82 or 14.81 so I'm just going to try and squeeze it over there 14.81 okay sorry about that ugliness there so I've got actually two values of the turning point so in this case uh, the first turning point is at uh, when x is negative 11 over 3 okay so my y would be 14.81 okay you can just verify it for me and the next one is where x is 1 so y would be negative 36 right so um the last thing and not really that we're going to need it that much but the point of inflection because i want you to see it the point of inflection. Uh, so the point of inflection, how do we get that? So in this case, we said we take the second derivative and make it equal to zero. What do we mean by the de a second derivative? We mean the derivative of the derivative. Now, our first derivative, which was this guy over here, Okay, 3x squared plus 8x minus 11. Okay, so we take f dash x is, we said 3x squared minus, or rather plus 8x minus 11. Now to get the second derivative, we take that one, which is going to now give us 6x plus a uh, plus eight yes and this is equal to zero and of course it means that 6x is equals to negative eight and we divide both sides by six okay so we divide both sides by six and so I will cancel that and that and of course minus eight over six this is the same as negative uh, 4 over 3 okay right again how do I find the y value of the point of inflection I am simply going to put that into the calculator uh, so I'm going to take f of negative 4 over 3 and uh, yeah put it into the original equation so that's going to be minus 4 over 3 cubed plus 4 into um yeah 4 into minus 4 over 3 squared minus 11 times negative 4 over 3 negative minus 30 okay right i'm not going to calculate that we're not really going to need it much but uh, nonetheless uh, then let's go into our drawing now before we go into the drawing what i want us to do is uh, so that i you can see it clearly okay so we said we found the y-intercept okay 
um, I believe it was at zero and minus 30. We found the x intercept. Okay, I just want to have them uh, nice and handy. We had uh, minus 5 and 0. We had minus 2 and 0. And we had, um, I believe it was 3 and 0. Um, we'll just go and check. Okay. And then we had number 3, the turning point. Okay. And that's where we had minus 11 over 3. And I think it was 14.81. Okay. And we had another turning point. Um, so we'd see which one is the maximum and which one is the minimum. Okay. Another one was 1 and minus 36. Okay. I already suspect that the minus 36 would be our local minimum. And in this case, uh, we've got, we said we've got the point of inflection, which we just found. Right, now, uh, we didn't have the y value. Uh, you can work that out on your own. Right, now let's try and draw this cubic function. So our a value is positive. So that means that we know we are starting with an increasing function. Okay, um, right. So there's our axes there so that's going to be our x axis it's going to be our y axis so now we know we're going to have okay that's at minus five we're going to have at minus three uh, negative three uh, sorry negative two rather uh, for our x intercept yes uh, so let me just uh, correct that so at negative two, so let me just get it closer here. Um, so that's negative two. And then we also have another one at X is equal to three. Okay, so our graph is going to cut at those points there. And then um, our Y intercept set at minus 30. So where Y is minus 30, so we're going to have, okay, if you don't mind, um, yeah, let's not, okay, let's just say that's minus 30. That's negative 30 there, okay? And then uh, I'm not drawing it to scale, so uh, please don't chastise me over it. Okay, so that's minus 30, okay? And, um yeah, so now let's work through our turning points. It always helps to work through our turning points. Now, the first turning point, uh, that's negative 11 over 3. Uh, let's see, 11 over 3 is the equivalent of what? Negative 3.66, so it should be, um, let's say, somewhere here, okay? Uh, so that's negative 11 over 3. But our y is 14.81. So it should be, you know, just let's say somewhere there. Okay. So it means that we've got, now you keep in mind, we said the shape should look like this because a is greater than 0. So that means that that should be a local maximum, okay? So in this case, I'm just going to make that, um, yeah, let's make a, a bright yellow color. Now, if you don't mind, I'm gonna take that. So it means I've got a, a maximum there, all right? And then um, I know that I already have another point which is going to be at 1 and 30 and minus 36. So uh, let's say 1 is somewhere there. Okay. And minus 36 is somewhere there. And we know in that case that's going to be a maximum. Okay. So uh, it's trying to take my yellow color. Okay. So in this case, 
I'm going to have a maximum over, I'm sorry, a minimum over there. Okay, now it will have to cut through that, uh, I mean that uh, minus 30 there. Okay, so let's finish off our graph. So this is what the graph would look like. Um, it should cut through somewhere there. And it should cut through somewhere there. All right, and that's where the graph, that's what it looks like. And by the way, the point of inflection, which is what we found there, what's at minus four over three, which is minus 1.33 somewhere. Uh, so it would be somewhere there. Okay, so it means at that point, this is where we are separating between the, con the, the concave up as well as the concave down shape, okay? So it means before the point of inflection, okay? So uh, when you go in that direction there, it's concave down, okay? And uh, after the point of inflection, it is concave up, okay? So that's very important for you to know what the meaning of that is, okay? Because there are questions that they ask, um, you know, concerning that, right? Um, so in is in essence that is how you would go about uh, drawing your cubic function. Um, I want to leave it here. I, I know it looks quite cumbersome. Uh, I hope that you will uh, look watch it again and you know try it on your own. Of course, we're going to do this some more another time. Uh, but for now, I just want to leave it here. Okay. And uh, please, if you haven't subscribed, please make sure that you're part of the family. Hit that subscribe button, hit that notification bell, and also tell as many people as you can, you know, about the channel. Uh, you know, comment below, tell me if you understand the lessons and some of the things that you're uncomfortable with, uh, you know, as I teach. Um, and obviously, we'll always try to uh, adjust uh, here and there. Uh, for your uh, um, maximum learning, okay? So in this case, um, I'm going to see you next time, all right? Uh, enjoy, enjoy, enjoy. We know that you can only learn maths when you do it. I'll see you guys next time. Shop, shop.